Ladies and gentlemen, the other thing about explanation is this. We are often taught that explanation, to be genuine, must go from the simple to the complex. Is that a, com a thing you're familiar with? We call it reductionism. You reduce things to the simplest physics and chemistry. And of course, the main aim of uh, physical reductionism is to reduce everything to physics and chemistry. And it's very successful in certain areas. There's one area that doesn't work, and that is the area of language. If you see anything written, you see the word veritas, you immediately know that whatever automatic processes or natural processes have gone into producing that, there's a mind behind it. And you recognize that just from a few letters. And I often have, well, fun with my colleagues who study DNA. And I pick up who are reductionists, and one example comes to mind that will explain everything. I was sitting at a table in my college having a lovely dinner with a man who didn't like to sit beside me because he found out I was a pure mathematician and said that was very boring. <laughs> and then when I tried to compensate and say I was interested in the deep questions of life like the status of the universe, he said that's even worse. <laughs> because I'm a reductionist, I'm an atheist, we've nothing to talk about. And I said, but we have actually. I'm fascinated by reductionism. I know at least three kinds. What kind do you? So we agreed that methodological reductionism, splitting a big problem into a little problem, was a good thing to do and solve the little problems and get insight. But he said, that's not what I mean. No, I said, I know it's not what you mean. You're an ontological reductionist. You believe everything can be reduced to physics and chemistry. He said, absolutely. So I said, let's do an experiment. And I picked up the menu. He said, an experiment? I said, of course, this is Oxford. <laughs> and he read it out. It said roast chicken. It wasn't very imaginative. It wasn't even written in French. And uh, <laughs> he said, roast chicken, what's the problem? I said, none from my perspective. But you're a reductionist. Yes, everything in terms of physics and chemistry. Yes, he said. OK, I said, explain to me the semiotics of these marks, R-O-A-S-T in terms of the physics and chemistry of the paper and ink. And there was silence. And his wife was beside him, and rather embarrassingly, she said, get out of that if you can. <laughs> but he didn't try. He was stunningly honest. He said, you know, he said, I've gone into my lab in Oxford, and he's a world-class biochemist, for 40 years every day believing that could be done. It was stunning. And I was so amazed. I said, but physics and chemistry have only been going for a few years. He said, it doesn't matter. It's not within the power of physics and chemistry to deal with the meaning. And then he looked at me a bit worriedly. He said, where did you get that argument? I said, it's OK. I got it from a Nobel Prize winner. Oh, he said, what a relief. <laughs> but it gets worse, ladies and gentlemen. He studies DNA. That's the longest word we've ever discovered. 3.5 billion letters in exactly the right order. What about that? Oh, a chance and necessity. I said, what? You see five letters of roast, and you immediately postulate mind. You see 3.5 billion letters in the right order. And you're forced by what? Science or materialist philosophy? To say that no mind is involved. I find that extremely odd.